What's going on everybody, Ronnie DiMaggio here, product specialist with BMW of Morristown. And in today's video, we are doing a walk around and overview with this 2001 BMW M5. This is, of course, the legendary E39 BMW M5. It is widely considered amongst both BMW enthusiasts and automotive journalists to be the best M5 ever made. Some say the best sports sedan ever made. Uh, lots of superlatives are very often thrown at this car and for good reason. It is incredible. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the exterior styling. We'll talk about the engine and the powertrain. We'll talk about the interior and we will give you a thorough tour of this gorgeous 2001 M5 and talk about why so many people love this car so, so much. But before we get into that, I do have to mention how we came across this car because of course we don't sell these new. We haven't for 20 years. Uh, so this car came in to our service department here at BMW of Morristown. Of course, our service department is fantastic. If you need anything done to your BMW, please give us a call 973-455-0700. Bring your car into service. We uh, work on cars like this, the older stuff, newer stuff, whatever it is, as long as it's a BMW, of course, we will be happy to look after it for you. So uh, that is how we came across this M5. It came in for service. Uh, it was just looking absolutely gorgeous in our parking lot. And so I felt uh, compelled to get in touch with the owner uh, and ask if we could film his beautiful M5 for this YouTube video. And of course he said yes. So thank you so, so much, Perry, to the owner of this M5. It is absolutely gorgeous and we are super, super grateful that you were generous enough to share your car with us. So thank you so much. Uh, but that'll do it for the introduction. Let's get into this 2001 M5. All right, starting off under the hood with the E39 M5, let's talk about this masterpiece of an engine. So the E39 M5 uses the S62, which is a 4.9 liter naturally aspirated V8. It makes 394 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque, and it has a red line of 7,000 RPM. So the S62 is, like all S engines, based on the M62, which was, of course, a naturally aspirated V8 uh, that BMW was using at the time. However, the S62 is really, really thoroughly redesigned and overhauled for use in the M5, as is true of all S engines, but the S62 got a lot of upgrades including it had double vanos. It was the first BMW to ever have double vanos. It has a revised timing chain and timing chain guide system. It has hollow camshaft. And most importantly, it has individual throttle bodies. So each of the eight cylinders has its own throttle body. And wow, does it sound incredible. So obviously this being a customer's car, we're not gonna drive it anywhere, but you know, in our parking lot to get it to a nice quiet place to film. However, uh, if you want some driving videos of the E39 M5, look up some videos of it revving and whatnot. Again, we don't wanna do any revving or anything with this car, it's a customer's car. Uh, but if you wanna hear how incredible the E39 M5 sounds, after this video, go look up some clips of it revving and specifically the induction noise, cause it is incredible with those individual throttle bodies. They sound just, I can't think of a word besides incredible. They sound so, so good uh, and that's one of the reasons uh, a lot of people like the S62. It's one of the reasons why it's so well liked is its sound, both the induction sound, the intake noise, and the exhaust noise are both really, really nice. Uh, but it is also said to have nice response. It's a very responsive engine in part due to those individual throttle bodies. Um, it has really good torque. 369 pound feet is quite a lot of torque out of a naturally aspirated V8 uh, at the time. It's not like the S65 that came after it that was in you that was used in E90 M3. Uh, that car had like no torque. It had 295 pound feet of torque. Uh, this car had good torque, good usable torque. So it had a strong mid range and you didn't have to rev it all the way out to get the power. It's a relatively low red line. 7,000 RPMs is about, you know, average for a red line, but it's not crazy high, like 8,400 RPMs, like the, uh, the S65 that came after it. Um, this is still an over square design. So the bore is a little bit bigger than the stroke. Uh, it's 94 to 89 millimeters uh, bore and stroke. So it is over square. So it has the architecture to rev high, but BMW just didn't really design it that way to be a high revving engine. It's a torquey sort of muscular, like has a lot of grunt type of engine. Um, another thing they revised, the compression ratio is higher, 11 to one in the S62 compared to 10 to one in the M62. So thorough overhaul for the E39. 
Uh, but that is the engine. It is paired exclusively to a six-speed manual transmission. BMW only offered the E39 M5 in with this engine, with a six-speed manual, and with rear-wheel drive. There was no options. Uh, that was it. You got a six-speed rear-wheel drive, uh, and that was what you got, and you liked it. So uh, that is uh, the E39 M5 and uh, engine and transmission. Let's go ahead and close the hood and talk about the styling starting up front and we'll move along the exterior of the car as well as the inside. Okay, front end styling with the E39 M5 and just before we get into anything specific, we have to say the styling on this car is one of BMW's best efforts, one of the best designs to ever come out of Munich, in my opinion. This car is downright stunning. It's not just, oh, that's a nice looking car, that's a pretty car. It is gorgeous. Uh, one of the best looking sedans, if not the best looking sedan of all time. Really, really stunning. And that's due in part uh, to the fact that it's very understated. You know, if you looked at this car and you looked at another E39 with the m -Tech package or an M-Sport package, it's kind of tough to tell them apart. You have to have a good eye and be an enthusiast to tell it apart. Nowadays, there's no mistaking an M5 for a 540 with the M-Sport package. There's no badge on the grill. There's no, you know, the grill is not uh, super large. It doesn't scream at you that it's a performance model. If you know, you know, and if you don't know, you missed out on getting excited at seeing a really cool car on the road. Uh, but let's get into some specifics. So this is a 2001 model. The E39 was facelifted for 2001 models. That means it got some slight tweaks, primarily to the headlights and taillights. Uh, this car has those gorgeous Corona rings, really uh, sort of original looking Corona rings. BMW has sort of shied away from the Corona rings uh, in recent designs and even into the later 2010s they kind of stopped being as prominent as they were but this was the heyday of corona rings you have those really gorgeous quad uh, daytime running lights which look fantastic now you do have some tips that this is an m5 mainly that lower part of the front fascia. You can see that there's a wider opening on either side of that main opening in the front, which is of course to get air uh, in contact with the radiator to help cool this big 4.9 liter V8. So the bumper is redesigned. There are specific things to the M5 up front, but it's nothing crazy. It's very, very subtle. Uh, it's just a beautiful looking car. And of course, uh, you do have the BMW roundel right up front there, front and center, prominently displayed. It's a pretty big roundel, so speaking of size, the E39 M5 is a pretty small car by modern standards. It's about the same size as a current 3 Series, uh, so, and it looks that way. It doesn't have a lot of uh, visual weight to it. It feels very, it looks very slim and sleek. Um, it looks trim and fit in person. Um, just standing next to it, being around it, it feels like I'm getting into a really small car compared to getting into even a modern 3 Series. Uh, but one thing that's not small about the car is the roundel. So the BMW roundel looks pretty big and you'll see uh, when we get to the back of the car that the M5 badge is sort of oversized, which I think is really cool. But that's the front, let's move around to the side. All right, along the side of the E39 M5, we'll find what in my opinion is one of this car's best angles. There are no bad angles on the car and every angle is a great angle, but the side profile is just really gorgeous. I think it has really nice proportions. Uh, the overhangs, the hood to the deck lid ratio, uh, all the proportions on this car just make sense. And when you look at it, you can just tell it's a very visually appealing car, pleasing car, just mathematically, you know, from a design perspective, the proportions are just right. They are done correctly. Uh, it has really classic rear wheel drive proportions, uh, which BMW does a lot. So you can see the car kind of looks like it's sort of being pushed towards its rear axle. You have a really nice and prominent Hofmeister kink, and you have a relatively wide space between that front axle line and this front door line contributing to the look that the car is sort of in motion even when it's just standing still. So that is uh, one of my favorite things are the proportions, but uh, let's take a look at some specifics. Starting with these wheels, these are the legendary style 65s that I believe came on all E39 M5s. I don't think uh, there were many options for wheels for this car, uh, but these are gorgeous. They're an 18 inch wheel, 245 in the front, uh, 275 in the back, 18s all around, no stagger diameter like we do today on uh, like G80M cars, none of that going on here. You do have a really subtle M5 badge here on the front door on both sides, integrated into that piece of black trim that starts in the front and goes all the way around the back. So. This car is carbon black. Uh, you could get the E39 M5. Uh, a lot of them are silver. And in those silver cars, 
this black piece sort of stands out a little bit and I think it looks nice on those, but with carbon black or any dark color car, uh, the E39 M5 I think looks best uh, because those trim elements sort of blend in, the black window trim, stuff like that all sort of blend in. A nice cool little touch uh, and this isn't anything fancy or special, uh, but I always like the wing mirrors on the M5. They have a very nice like rounded, smooth, subtle, easy shape, no M winged mir mirrors. It's just a cool sort of sleek aerodynamic looking mirror. Uh, I also really like the underhand door handles. So we actually sort of got back to that on the new two series coupe for some four series models. We're doing that now, which I really like. Uh, but I always like those underhand door handles. Uh, they just sort of scream like classic to me. It just feels like an older sort of OG BMW thing. So big fan of that. Um, but overall, the styling on the side of the car, again, like all angles on the car, uh, super, super subtle. It's just understyled. It doesn't scream at you. It doesn't even have a wide body uh, like the M3 did, the E46 M3 that was sold alongside this car. So super, super subtle. As far as the roof goes, uh, the M5 of this generation was not offered with a carbon roof, uh, but you did get a sunroof. So this car does have the sunroof. Um, and I think that's the way to go. I, I am a fan of sunroof uh, on the older cars. I like the carbon roof on the newer cars, but nice to be able to crack that sunroof on a nice day. That'll be it for the side of the car. Let's move around back and talk about the styling out there. All right, around back with the E39 M5, we have the trend of subtlety continuing. So there are probably the most tip-offs on the back of the car, sort of giveaways that it's uh, an M5 compared to a regular 5 Series. So let's talk about them. One being the uh, pretty massive M5 badge. The M5 badge is really big. It's definitely bigger than the M5 badge on current cars. And of course it is in Chrome, which I love. I really don't like that BMW puts black uh, M5, M3 badges on the competition package cars. I am a Chrome badge fan. So uh, glad to see this M5 retains its factory Chrome badge. Some people replace these with black badges. Please stop doing that. Uh, I like the Chrome badge. It, uh, I think it looks really nice. Uh, very classic looking. Looking uh, at the taillights next to the badge, like I said, this is an LCI car, so it's a 2001. Uh, that gives you these clear elements in the taillights, uh, and they just look a little bit more modern. Definitely not uh, an LED or anything, a uh, laser light or something like that. So it's definitely not uh, in the modern age of taillight technology, but it looks, you know, a little bit newer with some clear elements. Moving down to the lower part of the bumper, as we make our way down, we can see that that black trim is continued on both bumper corners. Looks really nice. Uh, and at the very bottom of the bumper, of course, we have our M quad tip exhaust to let this S62 sing. Um, the exhaust uh, is the quad tip design that BMW uses traditionally on every single M car now, but the quad tip M exhaust sort of started in this era. So the E46 M3 had it, and then every car after the E39 and the E46 generation of M3, M cars has a quad tip exhaust. But before this, the M5 that came before this, the E34, uh, and then the E28 before that did not have a quad tip exhaust. The E36 M3 that came before this, E30 did not have quad tip exhaust, but the M5, the E39 M5, this car is sort of the one that started that trend. And you'll notice as you look at the exhaust, it's not surrounded by any sort of aggressive carbon fiber diffuser with lots of fins and whatnot for airflow. It's just a nice subtle quad tip exhaust coming out from the bottom of a smooth bumper. At the top, you do have a little bit of a lip spoiler here. Super, super subtle. Uh, nothing going on crazy there, but a nice, again, little giveaway that this is an M5. So the back of the car is probably the most quote unquote aggressive angle on the car, but it's still not overstyled at all. Still super subtle. You have the spoiler, you have the badge, you have the quad tip exhaust, uh, letting you know that this is not your average 530i. So that'll do it for the exterior styling. Let's go ahead and hop inside and talk about the interior. So before we hop up front, I just wanna give you guys a quick idea of what it's like in the back of this M5. So uh, space is actually really, really nice. This driver's seat is in a pretty average position, not super far back, not super far forward. Uh, and I have plenty of knee room, plenty of leg room. If I sit straight up, I also have uh, actually a surprising amount of headroom. So space, uh, even though this car is relatively small, is really, really fine in the back seat. And beyond that, I just need to note that it looks like no one has ever sat back here in the 20 years that this car has existed on this earth. It is absolutely pristine back here. The leather looks great. And I don't know if that's uh, evidence to the fact that nobody has actually ever sat in this back seat 
or the fact that these cars hold up really well. The leather looks beautiful. Everything feels solid. There's no squeaks or anything weird going on. The carpets look nice. It's just all the, the wood trim, nothing's cracked. The plastics look great. They still have that nice finish to them. Everything back here is in incredible condition. So really impressed with both the build quality, quality of the E39 M5 and the way that this particular one has been kept over the years. As far as amenities back here, not much. You do obviously have uh, an ashtray because all German cars, uh, European cars back in this era had an ashtray. You don't have uh, individual climate controls, but you do have some vents here in the center. You have your window switch. You do have some manual sunshades uh, for your side windows. And you also have a fold down center armrest if you would like. So it's a nice enough place to be. This back seat's, like I said, pretty comfortable, pretty spacious. Uh, not much to do but smoke cigarettes back here. That's all the only sort of amenity you have is an ashtray. Uh, but it's a nice enough place to be. It's exactly what you would expect from a performance sedan uh, of this era. So that is the back seat. Let's go ahead and hop up front. All right, here we are inside of the 2001 BMW M5, and the first thing that jumps out to me is just how cool the configuration in this car is. So this car has the two-tone black and gray ostrich leather option. That's right, it's ostrich leather, which is pretty cool. Uh, I, my, I understand it that the um, ostrich leather was a pretty rare option on E39 M5. You do see it, um, you know, every now and then when one comes up for sale, if you pay attention to that market. But uh, cool to see. It looks really nice. Black and gray uh, goes obviously really nicely with the exterior. Uh, but the other thing that you'll notice is that this car has really gorgeous wood trim. So uh, I think that fits the ethos of this car, sort of the gentleman supercar uh, back in 2001, really nicely. Not carbon fiber, not aluminum. I think wood is the trim that I would want in this car if I had one. And it sort of speaks to the way that the M5 has evolved. Nowadays, the M5 is performance first. It's all about being the fastest around a track in a straight line, having crazy power. Uh, and it is. Uh, however, uh, the E39 M5 was, for its day, an incredibly powerful car, like crazy, crazy powerful. 400 horsepower was a huge number back in 2098 when this car was originally revealed. But it was also about being a luxurious car, a car with um, upmarket features. And the M5 still is like that to this day, but it's sprung really, really harsh. It's loud. Uh, it's really a brutal car, the current M5. And it's a good luxury car, but... It is just an animal in every way. This car is a little bit more relaxed. It's really fast in a straight line if you want it, but if not, you have wood trim, you have heated seats, you have a car phone, which was crazy cool technology back in the day. It's a little bit more relaxed in this car, and it's a little bit more like gentlemanly as opposed to like race car uh, than the current M5 is, which I really, really like. All right, let's talk a little bit about some of the options that are available on this car. Uh, we'll start with the center stack and just go over some of the tech because it's just really cool to see uh, and in some ways sort of funny to compare it to modern cars, uh, specifically modern BMWs. So you do have a full center screen here. It's not a touch screen, but it is capable of controlling your phone, your uh, radio, as well as your GPS navigation. So that's pretty cool to see in a car like this. Again, that was pretty uh, new edge technology uh, to have a screen, a large center screen like this here in your car. By today's standards, it is a positively tiny screen, but back in the day, you know, that's probably a six inch screen or so, pretty good to have. My favorite piece of tech in this car has to do with the car phone, which I don't want to disturb too much, uh, but you can see here that this has the original Motorola car phone, which is like the coolest thing I've maybe ever seen, uh, that this car has the original phone, BMW branded Motorola flip phone. Uh, they're plugged into the center console. Um, I'm almost sure that it doesn't work. Obviously, I'm not going to try it, but I don't think those still work. Uh, but it'd be really cool if it did. Um, but that's cool to have. Again, that was really cutting edge back in the day to have a car phone. That was like the coolest thing ever. So pretty cool to see that as well. 
Another thing that jumps out to me about the interior of this car is the availability and uh, sort of amount of storage that you have for front seat occupants. So this center console does not roll up. It only stores your uh, Motorola car phone. Uh, however, this uh, area right below the center console does open up with sort of a roll top design and you have another little pop out storage tray right in front of that. The door pockets, each door has two relatively large pockets for front passengers, the uh, forward most of which will fit a full size water bottle. Uh, which is really nice to see. And then right in front of that for the driver, right by the driver's left knee, you have a little coin holder, which is nice for tolls and things like that. So there is actually a nice amount of storage. You have a little tray in front of the shifter for like pens or whatnot. Uh, so you do have reasonably good storage in the front of the E39 M5. One thing that is not reasonably good, in fact, it's quite bad, is the cup holder situation. Uh, you're better off just putting your, uh, if it's a water bottle or something, between your legs in the passenger seat or in one of these door pockets. Um, but if it's an open cup, you just throw it out before you get in the car because these cup holders are not doing you any favors. Uh, they do exist. There are cup holders, but they sort of deploy from the center console here underneath the climate control. They don't work particularly well. Uh, not that I've tried it when I'm driving. You know, I could be wrong. If you're an E39 owner, uh, let me know how you like the cup holders down in the comments. But they don't look super sturdy. They don't look like they'd be able to hold a full water bottle, uh, you know, upright and the navigation system and the multimedia system sort of overhangs in front of the cup holder, so you couldn't fit a very big drink uh, in those cup holders, but they're there. Nice to see that they're there, but again, for the era of this car, cup holders were not a priority, especially not in German cars. Uh, that's the storage. It is nice to see that you do have pretty good storage in this car. Um, Let's talk a little bit about ergonomics, which is far more important than the cup holder situation. So the E39 M5, like all BMWs, especially from this era, uh, has really nice ergonomics. So first things first, both armrests fall at the same height. And if you sort of scooch this center armrest forward, uh, you have a really nice way to rest your hand on the shift knob here. Uh, the seats are super comfortable. They're not crazy heavily bolstered. Um, but for its era, this is definitely a sporty seat. They do have some side bolsters where uh, if you're just doing some spirited driving through a back road or a canyon, I'm sure they hold you in just fine. Not race seats, not bucket seats, carbon buckets like we sell in today's cars, uh, but they're very, very comfortable, very nice looking, and uh, they hold you in place well enough for the purposes of the car. Uh, they are, of course, power adjustable. You have, you know, your standard forward, backward tilt adjustment and three-way memory seats for the driver, which is uh, nice to see. Other ergonomics include the steering wheel, which fits in your hands really, really nicely. The nine and three grip is just fantastic. The 10 and two notches are there if you like to drive like that. Uh, otherwise, it's a relatively thin rimmed wheel, which I like. Uh, in these older cars, that's another sort of classic BMW thing. Uh, nowadays, the wheels are really thick and chunky, which I also am a fan of, but I like these wheels. They sort of fit the, the era of this car. You do have the M tricolor stitching uh, on the inside of the steering wheel. And speaking of the steering wheel in general, this sort of thinner, sort of more modern looking three spoke design was part of the LCI for the E39 M5. So pre LCIs, like 2001 model years and back uh, had a sort of chunkier steering wheel and not the most aesthetically pleasing. BMW fixed that and sort of went to what they're still continuing today with that thinner three spoke design, which this car has and looks really nice. You do have a little M badge down there in the center and you have some controls on the wheel, cruise control over on the right and some media stuff, volume, voice recognition uh, and whatnot over on the left. Another thing that's interesting to me is the steering wheel is electronically adjusted. Um, we still do that in a lot of cars, uh, the five and up cars, so like five series X5 uh, and up, X7, seven series, whatnot. But I'm sort of surprised to see it in the uh, E39 M5, 20 year old M5, so that's cool to see. Now let's move on to what might be one of my favorite pieces of this interior, that would be the gauge cluster. So the gauge cluster in the E39 M5, the E46 M3, and some, um, some other M cars that sort of followed it in the future, have these really, really beautiful gray faced gauges with white lettering. And I am just such a huge fan of these gauges. They look absolutely gorgeous. They're clear, they look like a watch face. They're so analog, they're perfectly round. There's no messing about with getting the information to the driver. It's a speedometer, a tachometer, oil temp, coolant temp, gas. That's all you need. And it's clear as day, really nice. And the gray uh, with white color scheme is beautiful. 
Now you do have in this car the early makings of a digital cluster, like obviously all of our gauge clusters in our modern cars are completely digital. And you do have some digital down here, so you have a lower portion of the display which shows your odometer, uh, your trip odometer, as well as the exterior temperature and any messages. So right now it says fasten seatbelt, so stuff like that. Uh, and then you have your warning lights surrounding it. Uh, check engine light, oil temp, uh, oil light, battery light, stuff like that. So you have your full array of warning lights. Uh, you do have in the gauge cluster one little M badge. Uh, that is one of a couple M badges you have in the interior. You have one on the gauge cluster, one on the steering wheel, as well as one on the shifter and the door sills. Uh, but otherwise, really beautiful looking gauge cluster. Very simple. Uh, it's flanked by the headlight controls on either side, as long as the, as well as the fog light controls uh, and your dimmer switch for the interior. So that's the gauge cluster. Really simple, really beautiful, really timeless, and I love it. BMW, if anybody from BMW is watching, uh, I have, I think that putting a digital version of this gauge cluster in our new iDrive 8, we know it's possible with software updates, I'm sure they could figure it out. That would be like my favorite thing in the world. I would love to see like a digital version of this gauge cluster as sort of a, a, a bit of fan service or uh, like an Easter egg. Um, to get those round gauges back in these modern cars would be super, super cool. So a uh, big fan of the gauge cluster. Another thing that I just want to touch on briefly in this car is the visibility because it's really, really nice. So these older cars, for various reasons, don't have as high of belt lines. I think most of that is for crash safety regulations, but that means that you can look out the window both on the driver and passenger side and sort of place the car a little bit better in the lane. You can see where you are, and feel where you are on the road uh, a little bit better. So the visibility is really nice out of the side. Front and rearward visibility is also really good. The wing mirrors are relatively small, but they're able to be positioned in such a way to give you nice visibility. You can look over your shoulder and you have a really tall rear window with a big sort of quarter window in the back there. So the blind spots are super easy to check just by looking over your shoulder. Uh, that's one of the many benefits of sort of older cars. I think visibility is a little bit better. Uh, other things worth noting, the clutch and shifter feel is something I was curious about, just putting it around our parking lot, uh, and it feels very classic, sort of old school BMW. It feels, if you've driven any other BMW from this era with a factory shifter, uh, it feels just like that one. There's nothing special for the M5, uh, but it feels nice. It feels, uh, the throws are sort of long by today's standards, uh, but, you know, it's a nice, easy throw. Uh, nice engagement when you get into gear. There's no sort of wondering what gear you're in. So the shifter is nice. Uh, the clutch is sort of a, a surprisingly short throw. There's not a lot of travel in it, but that's good. And the engagement point's super clear right towards the bottom of the pedal throw there. So clutch and shifter feels really nice. Uh, in the E39 M5. And of course, the shifter is important to talk about because this was only offered with a manual. So, um, and that sort of brings me into a little bit of a discussion about the competition. So the E39 M5 was manual only. The main competitors to this car were C5, Audi R6, W211, E55, uh, AMG, and to an extent W210 uh, that sort of overlapped in the early years of this car. This was the only one of those that you could get with a manual. The RS6 and the E55 were both auto only. They're both in their own right fantastic cars. I, I'm a really big fan of the RS6 and the E55 and the E63 that sort of succeeded the E55 in the W211 generation. Both fantastic cars, but both have really old, really lame five-speed automatic transmissions. Uh, the E39 M5 was only available with a manual. So if you wanted a four-door, you wanted a German sports sedan for the air, and you wanted three pedals, E39 M5 was the choice. Um, it was, however, the least powerful. So RS6 had 450 horsepower. E55, with that supercharged uh, AMG V8, had uh, 469. RS6 was all-wheel drive as well. So there was a lot of cool choices to be had uh, amongst those cars. It's sort of my favorite era of German cars. There's, there's just no bad choice. Choices, whatever you end up with there. Um, RS6 is awesome. That's one of my favorite cars. E55 is a cool car. E39 M5 is obviously an incredible car. Really love these two. So it comes from a really cool era. And the transmission is an important thing to talk about there because its competitors uh, were auto only. So that will do it for a quick look around the interior of this E39 M5. Overall, it's held up great. Uh, this one is kept. You can tell that the owner of this car loves it because it's kept in really nice shape. Everything works. Uh, everything looks nice. There's no weird wear and tear. It all feels solid. You push on parts of this dashboard and it just doesn't make any noise. It's just built 
fantastically. It looks really nice. It's a timeless place to be. It's classic BMW. It's comfortable. I'm sure the sound system sounds fine. Didn't try it out, but I'm sure it's nice enough for long road trips. And you do have some amenities. In the time you had a phone, you had uh, functional navigation. Nowadays, that stuff's sort of outdated. You would just use your cell phone for that with maybe a dash mount or retrofit some CarPlay units there. Um, but really, really nice interior uh, to spend some time in. So that'll do it for the inside. Let's go ahead and wrap up outside with our final thoughts. All right, so that's gonna do it for this walk around and overview with this incredible 2001 BMW M5. This is like the BMW for me, folks my age. Uh, it's just the car that ticks all the boxes. Manual, a beautiful naturally aspirated engine with a lot of horsepower, but not so much that you can't actually exploit the engine's full potential on the road. Gorgeous styling. Uh, rear wheel drive, it just has everything uh, that you could want out of a sports sedan. And so growing up, this was always a really, really exciting car for me, something I really loved. And spending some time with this one just reaffirms that uh, I would love to own one of these one day. Just a really incredible car. And I hope that you guys enjoyed checking out this E39 M5 as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you all. Again, I cannot say thank you enough to the owner of this car for being so, so generous and so willing to let us check out this car. I and uh, all of our channel and, and all of us here at BMW Morris Town are super, super grateful for that. So thank you so much. And again, uh, like I said at the beginning of this video, this car came in for service. So if you need service on your BMW, whether it's an E39 M5 or a 2019 330, uh, whatever it is, we are more than happy to take care of you here at BMW of Morristown. But that'll do it for this one. Uh, please follow us on Instagram where we took some pictures of this car. So keep an eye out for those. Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at BMW of Morristown. Uh, but that'll do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.